interested in uh, renewable energy crops uh, several years ago when the Soybean Association realized they had a surplus of soybean oil on the market. So let's get into biodiesel and learn how to make it, uh, get some of that surplus off the market. Uh, it will help soybean farmers that are getting the price of oil up. It will uh, be a renewable energy. It burns clean. Uh, we keep the economy here at home. Uh, it got me excited about something. You know, uh, I'd gotten a little complacent with uh, just straight farming, and I got excited about renewable energy, especially from the biodiesel side. Uh, I've worked in several aspects of it in the last few years, and now in February of this year, I uh, took on the endeavor of uh, being the director of farming for the uh, Biofuel Center of North Carolina. That gives me a chance to look at not just uh, soybean oil for biodiesel, but other crops, uh, canola, sunflower, camelina for oil crops uh, that can be converted into diesel fuel, but also uh, root crops and things that I've never seen before. Uh, sugar beets. You know, we're growing sugar beets at several, at four stations around the state to see what we can grow underground, along with the uh, industrial sweet potatoes that you'll see t today. Uh, then we are looking at even some traditional crops like grain sorghum or sweet sorghum, things that have been grown in North Carolina in the past. Might have a fit now with uh, as we bring on uh, fermentation for corn. We're looking at you know alternatives. We're not trying to take corn uh, and seeing how much corn we can convert into alcohol, but areas that don't grow, uh, don't have enough rainfall to grow a good crop of corn, maybe grain sorghum works. We're looking at energy canes, perennial grasses, and we're looking at, uh, at trees, um, uh, new species of trees that are fast growing, low lignin, that can be converted into taking the cellulose, break it down to the starch, to the sugar, and, and convert into alcohol. Uh, the pine trees that we have grow. We have a lot of forest resource land in North Carolina that's not being managed and utilized. So, yeah, we got lots of potential in the forestry end. Um, we hear people talk of marginal land, uh, but usually if you plant a crop in marginal land, you get marginal results. And some people like to say if it's marginal land, it's already been converted into forest land. So you'll be seeing some things here today that uh, are very interesting, some of the processing, some of the, you know, how do we grow these crops? We've got a lot of things to study. Uh, you know, we're starting out the first year of planting sugar beets, we're learning. We've got a ways to go. Right. But what I'm looking at is uh, what alternative crops, what uh, options can we offer to farmers? It's got to be something they can make money on. We've got to still feed the world and feed our country. Uh, population's growing, but so is uh, food production. Lots of things uh, happening in, well, I'm more familiar with corn and how that has progressed over the years. Uh, strawberry tunnels where you can grow straw, pick strawberries six months out of the year instead of six weeks. These renewable energy crops are uh, you know, sort of the same thing. What's it going, what's going to be there that can help the farmers have some options and make some money?